Welcome back. Before we get into polishing, here are a few tips to remember. Always make sure to polish in shaded areas. If you can, do it indoors. If not, use a canopy. Also, make sure to do your research before you start polishing. Every car's paint is different. So now, let's get started. here with Detail Garage. We put a lot of work into this point. We've done a lot of stuff on this car, but now we're at the meat and potatoes. We're at the polishing and paint correction episode. This is where it all pays off. This is all the work that you do beforehand and everything you do afterwards. This is center, this is home. This is where you need to work on it. This is where you bring back that pristine shine of your car. This is where you fix those problems. So let's cover what we've done. We fixed the headlights, we cleaned the car, we clayed the car, we are now ready to polish. There's so much that goes into detailing a car, but this is what it's all about. Polishing, as Greg said, is getting down to business, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take you through the steps. We're gonna introduce you to polishing machines. We're gonna introduce you to compounds. We're gonna introduce you to chemicals. We're gonna introduce you to rotary, dual action. We got a lot of stuff going on in this episode. We try to keep it down time-wise, but this is probably gonna run long. So get comfortable, and let's have Greg break it down for you. So today on this episode of Detail Garage, it's all about polishing. Now you've seen the work we've done on our Project Honda Civic. We've washed it, we've clayed it, we've even restored the headlights and got that gloss back. But now it's time to get down to business and handle the paint. Now the paint on our black Honda Civic project car is truly neglected. It's gross, has a lot of swirls, scratches, oxidation, and true neglect and damage that we're gonna go ahead and correct today using some of our polishing techniques. Now polishing is oftentimes really challenging, but we're gonna make it real easy and show you how we at Detail Garage are gonna make the car shine and restore the finish. Now I have everything laid out that we're gonna use for polishing, and I wanna give you a few tips and tricks that are gonna help you get started into polishing so you know the basics of exactly Exactly what we're gonna do. So I have everything laid out. I got my polishes, my pads, and my machines. Let's go through step by step about each step on what it does, how it works, and how they all work together as one. So let's start with the polishes. Now I have our four V line of polishes set out right here. This is our Chemical Guys V32, V34, V36, and V38. We have two compounds and two polishes. Now the compounds are designed to remove heavy swirls and scratches, exactly what this Honda Civic has. It's neglected, has heavy swirls, scratches, oxidation. We're gonna use our compounds to cut them out. Now V32 is for extreme cutting. We're gonna use V34 to remove the swirls and scratches because that's right in the ballpark of what we need to use. Now we're also gonna use our V36 and our V38. Now V36 and V38 are designed to refine the finish. After the compound cuts out all the heavy swirls and scratches, V36 and V38 are gonna bring back that gloss and that shine. It's also gonna work in conjunction with the pads because you can't use polish without the right pads. So we have our yellow, orange, green, white, red, blue, and black pads. These are all we're gonna use. We're not gonna use all the pads, but we're probably gonna use three to get the job done. We're first gonna start out with our orange pad. Now our orange pad is one of our heavy cutting pads. You have our extreme cutting pad, which is our yellow, but we don't think we need that because Honda paint's usually a softer, more sensitive paint. So we're gonna use our orange Hexlogic pad. Now our green pad's for medium polishing, but right after I use our V34 with our orange pad, I can go ahead and work our way to our V36 with our white pad. Now the white pad's a medium polishing pad. It's gonna bring back the gloss right to the paint. The V34 and the orange pad are a very aggressive cutting pad. It's going to cut down the swirls and remove all the damage from the paint, but then we've got to bring back that gloss with V36 and the white pad. Now the white pad's a little bit softer than the orange pad, and it's going to be more sensitive on the paint. Now I'm also going to follow up with V38. Now v 38 is an ultra-fine jeweler's polish. It's designed for ultra-fine finishing. I'm probably going to use that with a blue pad to make sure that I refine the finish and get that nice soft touch. This is great for black cars since our black car is truly hammered and has years of neglect. Now I also got standing on hand our Black Optics microfiber cutting and finishing pads. Now microfiber cutting pad is a very intense way to cut the paint. On a lot of portions on our vehicle like the roof and the hood, they have a lot of damage. It looks like it was going through a uh, 
automated car wash where it has brushes and can easily scratch the car. Now the microfiber is actually designed to grab onto the polish and use it to its true cutting power. It's going to help reduce a lot of the damage that can happen on the paintwork when polishing by cutting through and exposing fresh clear coat. I got my cutting orange pad and my finishing pad here just in case I need a little bit more cutting power. Now every paint on every kind of car is different. A Mercedes, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, Honda, Subarus, they're all different. Honda and Japanese cars are known for being a little bit more sensitive, so we're going to use a little bit more sensitive polishes as to a typical American car where it needs a lot of aggressive cut like a V32. So let's talk about our machines that we're going to be using right now. There's two different types of machines that exist in the industry that are the most popular. We have our rotary machine. Now this is a flex rotary. This is called a high speed rotary buffer. This is for doing high speed compounding and high speed cutting. These are used in body shops or by professionals. Now this machine can create a lot of heat and I would not recommend this to you guys unless you're truly trained as a professional detailer. What we're going to use today is what you guys have out there. We're going to use dual action polishers. Now dual action polishers spin just like a rotary, but they also have safety features like a dual action setting so it doesn't burn the paint. It's going to give a nice easy finish on the paint. It's going to cut through all my damage. This is a Porter Cable 7424 just like you guys have out there. It's the most easiest machine to use on the market. We also have a Rubes polisher. This is an Italian polisher. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more powerful, and has a big, huge 21 millimeter throw. I'm going to use this on the hood and the roof. It's going to help me cut through a lot of the damage quicker than a porter cable. But the porter cable is going to do great in all the smaller spots like the bumpers or the side panels or even the lower areas of the vehicle. I'm going to team these up with our microfiber or our foam pads, the right machines, the right polishes, and we're really going to get the job done. So we're going to go ahead and grab my buddies and we're going to get just working on our Honda Civic black project car. Let's do it. So here we are guys, we're getting ready to polish this car. Now a couple things to go over before we start polishing. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to use a paint meters gauge. Uh, we already measured this car, but generally if we're polishing this panel right here, you want to measure at about five different spots. So I would measure here, 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 and here, just to get an average reading on the paint itself. So that way you don't you know, burn right through the clear coat and into the paint. So now that's done, I'm going to grab my polisher. I'm going to be using the Roops 15. This is a dual action polisher. There's uh, dual action polishers that are a lot safer because they spin and they also oscillate. So that way, even if you put too much pressure or time at a spot, it's not going to burn through the clear coat. Um, there's different types of polishers out there. There's the rotary polisher as well. Um, the rotary polisher are tr pretty much truly just for professional use only because they, the way they spin, they heats up so fast. And if you don't really have the proper technique or the skills, you're going to really easily damage pretty much every, the panel that you're working on. So right here I got in front of me our Hexlogic orange pad. I already mounted it on here. I'm going to grab our V34. Now V34 is more of a, 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 a compound. It has a lot of grit to it. It cuts very quickly. So what you're going to do is shake up the product and put five drops on your pad. Okay, this is a fresh pad, so I'm going to put six. <clears throat> Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and take your polishing pad conditioner and give it two quick sprays on there. Then what you want to do is put it on speed setting one and go ahead and spread out the compound like so. And when you're polishing, you always want to be working in a small area. I like to work in a two by two. Uh, or something like this size. <clears throat> Go ahead and put it on speed setting one, turn the machine on, and spread out the compound. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and bump it up to speed setting six <clears throat> and start polishing. Now you want to do overlap passes. So you're going to see this on camera right now, what we're, how we're going to polish. But, so follow along. Here we go. So 
So when you're polishing, you have to keep in mind that as you can see on camera, I was overlapping my passes about 50%, kind of like how you would mow your lawn. Uh, you want to do about four passes and you notice a little bit of light dusting. Um, V32 and V34 is a compound, so it does have a very light dusting to it. And when you first spread on the polish, you can see the polish goes on very thick and you can really tell that there's polish on there. When you, once you've done about maybe three to four passes, you're going to notice that the polish actually turns almost translucent. Um, that means the polish has properly bro broken down and you're pretty much ready to wipe it off and kind of see what you got underneath there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, perfect. So now that we used our orange pad with our V34, it cut down a lot of the heavy scratches and swirl that was on this vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to our white pad. And remember, if you're using a compound, you always have to follow it up with either a polish or a finishing polish. So now I'm gonna switch to our white Hexlogic pad, which it's almost like a, um, a finishing pad so to speak. It, it still has a little bit of bite to it, but not as aggressive as the orange or the um, green. So I'm gonna move down to our V36, which is a polish now. Go ahead, same thing, shake up the product. Oh, and go ahead, same thing. You're gonna put about five dots. Again, because it's a fresh pad, I'm gonna put a little bit extra on there. Same thing, take your pad conditioner and give it a quick spray. And back to speed setting one. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the V34. We're gonna go ahead and spread out the polish. And then spread it out on speed setting one. And we're gonna now go back to speed setting six. <clears throat> and again, do about four passes, overlapping 50-50. Perfect. So now that we've done our pass with the V36, again, we're going to go ahead and wipe off the polish and inspect our work here. So from the looks of it, we got pretty much, I would say this is about 75 to 80% of scratches and swirl removed on this panel. There's some deeper scratches up here that I can feel with my fingernails. Those will not come out. Um, as Corey explained in the previous episodes that, you know, once a chip or a scratch goes all the way down through the clear coat, through the paint, through the primer, down to the substrate. And so there's no paint there for me to correct. So, but we're going to keep moving on. Now that we're done with the V36 and the white pad, we're going to switch this out and we're doing a true three-step paint correction. So this is step two. We're going to get the white pad off. So now we got our blue Hexlogic finishing pad. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the roofs. Make sure it's nice and centered. Perfect. And I'm also gonna grab our V38. Our V38 is a final polish. This is very, very fine. It doesn't have that uh, aggressiveness to it like the 36 or the 34. I'm gonna go, go ahead and shake it up and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we've been doing. We're gonna put five dots onto our pad or six. If it's a fresh pad, I like to put a little bit more go polish down and then same thing we're gonna grab our pad conditioner and give it a quick spray and spread it out again on speed setting one and when I'm using this polisher right here uh, there's many different types of polishers out there there's the Porter cable dual action the flex VRG uh, you also have rotary polishers out there. When I'm using this polisher, specifically the Roops 15 or the 21, you don't really have to put much pressure 
on the machine itself. I'm literally putting about two pounds of pressure um, versus the Porter cable where you have to put about five to seven pounds. So anyways, speed setting one, we're gonna go ahead and spread out. And we're gonna go to speed setting six. And start polishing. All right, so now we're done with our three-step polish. I'm gonna go ahead, again, you can see the polish has turned a translucent color. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Perfect, so now that we wiped off the final polish on this vehicle, I don't know if you guys can see through the lens of the camera that this area definitely looks to me 80% better than this area and this panel right here where I haven't touched with a machine polisher or our polish. But this is it. This is how you would properly do a three-step paint correction with a compound, polish, and a final polish. Now, me and the guys are gonna get working on this, the rest of this vehicle. And there's a reason why we're not showing you this whole car. Because we want you to wait for the season finale of this episode where we deliver the vehicle back to its owner. Now, we're gonna get working on the rest of the car and make sure you stay tuned for our next episode where we tackle the interior of this beast and follow us on our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where we have constant updates on everything that we're doing. Now remember, with the proper tool and the proper chemical, detailing can be very fun and easy and simple. So I'll catch you guys next time.